Hello everybody, I'm Callum at Repair Wins, and I've got a fairly special device in front of me today. It's a Samsung Galaxy S4 Mini. Check this noise out. You remember that bad boy? Yeah, and look at the state of it. This thing is in horrible condition. Um, and that is why it's the perfect candidate for a little project I've got today. So, it originally came out of the factory with Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. It was updated to 4.4 KitKat, which came out in 2013. I want to update it to Android 13, which came out in 2023, I think. And apparently, you can do that, um, thanks to the help of a couple of geniuses on the XDA forum. So that's going to be the project today. We're going to try and update this 12-year-old phone to run an operating system that's only two years old. Will it work? Will it actually run? And will I be able to use it as a gym phone? Because that's the whole motivation for doing this project. For this is complete flipping e-waste. I mean... It's absolutely bashed, you know. Um, this this doesn't have any value to a recycler, never, never mind any commercial value. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I think it could be quite interesting, and I'm going to relive my 16, my 17-year-old days, because I used to mod old phones like this all the time, try and make them run a bit faster, try and squeeze some more life out of them, you know. Yeah, but without any further ado, let's get, let's get on with it. This is what we're working with. I hit apps, go to settings, Scroll all the way down. I just need to find the information about the phone, which is probably going to be under more. About device. And here we are, 4.4.2, Android KitKat. This phone has been updated to the latest version. Um, in order to modify it, I need to unlock something called developer mode, which you do by tapping build number seven times. Um, but I've already enabled developer mode on this phone. And now I'm going to this menu and enable USB debugging. We'll hit OK. And ideally, there's going to be something called OEM Unlocking, or Unlock Bootloader. And the bootloader is what loads prior to the software on the phone. Like, you know, it runs a Samsung, it runs Android. Um, but yeah, there's no bootloader unlock, but because the phone's so old, there should be some sort of a hack or a mod or whatever that will get us around that anyway. But I've enabled USB debugging, and disable verify apps via USB. We don't want any verification, that's the point, we're hacking the phone. Um, and now we should just be able to switch it off and then we can boot it into recovery and start and start the second stage of the process. The next step is to boot the phone into download mode. So to do that I'm going to hold the home button, the volume down button and the power button. And now I'm going to let go and I'm going to hit up and that's put us into download mode. I'm then going to connect the phone to this lovely state of the art 2025 17 year old netbook. I'm running a piece of software called Odin, which is what you use for this sort of thing. I go to the options. I've told it not to automatically reboot. We don't want it to do that, because if it automatically reboots, we might lose our progress. I'm going to hit the AP option, and I'm going to go to Downloads, which is where I've put the recovery. And here's the recovery. Double-click it. And then I should just be able to hit Start, which I accept is a bit hidden, but that's the nature of using a laptop this old. So I'm going to hit Start. And with any luck, that should complete. And, oh, oh God, for a moment there, I thought it was going to reset the phone, because it said reset, but no, that's, that's all working. That says pass. So what we need to do now is switch the phone off and boot it into recovery. Good news, off camera, I've confirmed that it works. So I'm going to hold home, volume up, and power. And as soon as it vibrates, I'll let go, keeping these two held. You can see recovery's booting, and it's complaining about the warranty. But given this phone has been out of warranty for 10 years, I'm not too worried about that. And then we'll see that childhood screen, you know? Team win recovery project. Boom! God, I've not seen that in quite a while. Um, but anyway, we now need to wipe the phone. So I'm going to, I'll admit I don't know everything. I'm going to go away and check out what it wants me to wipe before I just start randomly destroying partitions. According to the documentation, we wipe system, data, cache and the Delvic cache and you are supposed to do a backup before doing something like this by the way um, you shouldn't take my video as gospel you know you really should do a backup prior to wiping your phone but this phone is ancient I've got no data on it that's worth anything at all and if I really do brick it that badly number one I've got two more of them but number two I can just reflash the data off camera you know I can reflash a stock ROM and then get us back to where we need to be but anyway, I've managed to wipe the data from the phone, so I'm going to hit back. Um, if it wants me to reboot, I'll go and reboot now. I just need to check what the next step is. 
No doubt it'll be more complex in the real world, but back in the day, I remember, instead of dragging files over and putting them on an SD card and stuff, you could just go to Advanced and then ADB Sideload. Swipe to start the sideload. And on my computer, I need to type in ADB Start Server, I believe. This has been several years, by the way, we're going on memory. Um, server, hopefully Linux just had it built in. Of course it does, because Linux is amazing. And I can't remember how to get it to show me the devices, but I can now type in ADB Sideload. Um, and I will drag from my other screen, I've got Lineage OS right there. So I just drag it over, drop, and we'll just see if that wants to work, shall we? Go. I missed the key. Go. And it's instantly rebooted, or should I say it's failed to read, or whatever else has happened. It turns out I hadn't quite downloaded the correct version of Lineage OS, but that's all right, because I found the correct one here. And you can see it's been downloaded 14,000 times near enough. And then look at all the downloads for the older versions. You know, there's probably 25,000 smartphones that have been saved from landfill. Um, and when these companies preach their eco stuff, when they tell you to throw your phone away and buy a new one every year, um, they, obviously don't, they obviously don't take stuff like this into account. You know, the fact that an old phone can still be useful. But anyway, I've downloaded the new file and I'm going to tell the phone to sideload it. So we're going to hit enter once more and hopefully this time it works. So if it doesn't fail instantly, and it hasn't, check that out, and then this might just work. There we are, patching system image unconditionally, you know. Our love is unconditional, that kind of thing. No, maybe not, but we're patching the image, so I'm going to come back in just a moment, and fingers crossed, this is actually going to work. Apparently all we do is we reboot, so reboot, and we're going to say, oh, it says no OS is installed. Let's just assume that there is one installed and tell it to reboot anyway. Um, and very quickly it's going to fail if there's no OS, but I'm fairly confident there is. So we'll just see, won't we, if it wants to start booting something, great. If it doesn't, we'll fix it. Oh, and by the way, sometimes people would put the Google apps on their phones. I've got this thing running literally one app. It's an app for the gym that I go to, so I don't care about Google apps and whatnot. But that, my friends, is booting. So if we're lucky, it won't crash, it won't boot loop, it won't have any issues. I'll just come back to you in a few short moments and we'll basically we'll have the answer. Ah, check that out. <laughs> the thing is actually working. Let's hit start. Can you believe it? This phone is prehistoric. I better just cover the screen. It's going to show you all my Wi-Fi networks. Um, but no, I'm just going to connect to my Wi-Fi um, and we'll continue on with the setup process. But I, oh my goodness, I almost can't believe this is actually working. It's fantastic. Check it out. We're in the phone. It's all booted up. I'm going to go to About Phone, and I'm hoping it'll tell me the version of Android. Right, Android 11. That's a little bit older than I was hoping, but it's still a version of Android. Seven versions newer than what this phone shipped with. We've literally given the phone, um, well, basically seven years of software updates instead of, um, instead of the one year that Samsung gave it by default. Isn't that just mad? You know, how Samsung has pretty much written the phone off um, just after, like, a year, just because that was the norm back then. But we've actually got a phone that works, and you can see it's got bugger all storage. I mean, most phones have 8 gigs of RAM these days, never mind 8 gigs of storage. But again, it's literally running one app, um, and that's all I need it to do. This is the app that I want. It's called True Coach. Version 2.1 is the latest version, and I can confirm that version 2.1 is what's running on my S23 currently. Oh, and it wants Android 6.0 or newer. So I reckon that this phone will have a good few years of support running this app. Fingers crossed it works. I have the file downloaded to my PC and I'm going to try doing this. File name doesn't end in APK or OPK, whatever. Right, let's just try <laughs> literally making it end in APK. I'm just going to rename it on my computer. Try again. Now, for some reason, I don't think this is going to work, but no, it's failed to install. The way that I ended up making it work is that I right click is that I renamed the .apkx to a zip, then I extracted it to here, and um, I deleted all of the languages that weren't relevant, because I speak English, and while I'm trying to learn Spanish, I don't need my gym coaching app in Spanish. I definitely didn't need any of the other languages. So I've just left high DPI, which is for high DPI screens, config.en, as in config.english, and then the actual app itself. And all I did was I came over here, told it to install, 
and then it installed it. I tried to do the little English thing afterwards, but that failed because it turns out it's installed it all in one go. But now, if I show you the phone, come on down here, True Coach, check that out. That's working absolutely fine. I've switched to the habit tracker part of the app because that doesn't have any logos or anything that identifies obviously the gym I go to. I've given the app a test, everything works the way that I would expect it to. Um, I'm really, really pleased with it because it now means that I can take this literally worthless, um, even though it's in A grade condition, if I do say so myself, S4 Mini, 12 year old phone, and I can use it at the gym. And if I accidentally drop a weight on it, if I accidentally drop the phone, or whatever else, if the screen gets smashed, it's no big deal, you know? And that is, um, that's kind of what we're all about here. We're about reusing devices, figuring out ways to squeeze every last bit of life out of them. Although I've got to say, I didn't expect that we'd actually manage to get Android 11 running. And, you know, for the most part, it wasn't even that difficult. So if you've got an old phone in the cupboard, then maybe this is something you ought to try yourself. I had planned to record the outro on this phone, but then I remembered that not all phones have good cameras, and this one certainly doesn't qualify as a good camera phone. Um, but either way, it's working perfectly for my needs. I was able to use it at the gym on Friday and on Saturday. No problems whatsoever. The thing's just working reliably. And I did actually drop it, but to be fair, I only dropped it on AstroTurf. But it's so light, the thing just bounces. I, you know, I was dropping it on purpose, and it just kept bouncing and coming back up. Anyway, I'm happy with it. It's doing the job for me. Um, fingers crossed it continues to do the job for, you know, another couple of years, ideally. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got for you today. Um, if you found the video entertaining, possibly helpful, useful, something like that, then feel free to give it a like. Very handy. You know, we appreciate stuff like that around here. Remember, got to grow the channel, got to increase the reach, and then someday we'll be able to lobby companies like Dell and tell them to stop building junk and to start making reliability the forefront of their mission. Um, if you want to see where this channel ends up going, um, hopefully <laughs> hopefully it escapes 100 subscriber hell, then um, feel free to subscribe. Um, I don't know what's coming next, but I do know it will be at least semi-decent. It's going to be another electronics-related video, um, so you just have to stay tuned for it. But until next time, I will see you later. Take care for now, and goodbye.